The image on the cover is supposed to look like one of those uh, anti-drug ads where there's a woman sleeping in the background and in the foreground is a landmine that has four icons glowing on it. Um, a message, a tweet, uh, Facebook's logo, Instagram's logo. And the passage below reads, you wouldn't sleep with a landmine, would you? Obviously, no. Kick smartphones out of the bedroom at night. An accessible ADHD guide for slash by artists. And one of the things that I personally do is I moved all of my devices out of my bedroom so that it's not the first and the last thing that I see when I wake up. And that makes a very big quality of life difference. The first two pages inside are references to quotes from a Dr. Russell Barkley, who's one of the, you know, one of those classic old white guys in the medical industry. And he's considered one of the foremost experts of ADHD. And even though he has this very classical orientation towards being an authority figure, um, I still like a lot of the philosophical ideas behind some of the things that he starts getting into. For example, uh, he describes intention deficit disorder uh, as well as time blindness as a better way to describe ADHD because ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, is a misnomer. For one, not everyone has hyperactivity and that's why he came up with a more accurate description. But if you start getting into this idea of intention deficit disorder, you're really starting to question ideas of free will. And that's kind of interesting. He also has things that I think uh, some people would say are alarmist, but I still find the ways that he describes emotional regulation kind of important for me to have um, more acceptance around this idea of why do I do certain things. And some of the ways he describes things make me feel like I'm very irrational in a very predictable way. So one of his statistics that he writes about is how 50 to 70 percent of ADHD kids are utterly rejected by close friendships by second grade. The inability to make and keep close sustained friendships with other children. It's a devastating consequence of this disorder. Their child is not as liked as other children. The sleepovers, going to the movies, where people celebrate their pure relationships, the emotional impulsiveness gets in the way. Friends forgive your distractibility, your working memory problems, and even your restlessness. They will not forgive your anger, your hostility, the quickness with which you emote to other people, because it is offensive. It is socially costly. So that's from his uh, YouTube talk that you can find 30 essential ideas parents should know about ADHD. Moving on, I love this book maybe more so than any of the official ADHD resources, um, but it's an excerpt from Leah Lakshmi Pipna's uh, Samarin Senha's, sorry if I butchered the name, Care Work. And I'm wondering if I have that book anywhere. I've been listening to it as an audiobook, it's great. And this is just one quote on a green page that reads, but before we jumped into Google Calendar, one member pulled out a flip chart. She said that before we did anything, we needed to talk about what would allow us to give and receive care. Most of us, she pointed out, had received shitty care, abusive care, care with strings attached. Most of us, she guessed, would want to give care and then shrug and say, I don't know, I'm fine, when asked what we needed. We went around. What made it possible for us to receive care? What was bound up with that act of reception? Under what conditions could we be vulnerable? And then from Danny Donovan, who really became uh, a big name in terms of infographics around ADHD dilemmas. These are some hard to swallow pills, specifically childhood bullying. One, you can't help 
how your brain is wired. Two, you are not the names they called you. Three, bullying is traumatic emotional abuse. Four, teachers can be wrong. Five, constant criticism ruins self-esteem. Six, perfection is a lie. Seven, you are different, not broken.